come with me to do a bird physical exam and learn if your bird's healthy. Before we even touch the bird, I observe it for any signs of stress. A sick bird will often appear fluffed, and a bird with respiratory distress will often have a tail bob. Birds that are very sick can pass away from the stress of an exam, which is why I'm very careful. I start by looking at the eye. Some birds have easier to see pupils than others, but I'm mostly looking for discharge. I'm looking for dehydration. Sometimes their eyes are sunken in when they're dehydrated, so I'll kind of lift the lid a little bit and see how long it takes to go back to normal. I also look for cataracts because as birds age, they can develop cataracts as well. And then when I look at the nose, I'm looking for debris that's in the nose. I'm looking for discharge. I also look at the ears. There's the ear. Then I look in the mouth. So when I look in their mouth, I'm looking for the coanal papilla at the roof of the mouth. Right there, you can see the little projections on the roof of the mouth. Those are called coanal papilla. And those are nice and pink and sharp in healthy birds, but if they have a vitamin deficiency, those will become blunted. And once they're blunted, they never grow back. All right. I also look at the beak and make sure there's no malalignments or any fractures. You can see scissor beak when it goes to one side or the other, or the front or the bottom can become overgrown. So then I go and I feel the crop right here. The crop feels nice and soft. It doesn't feel like there's any debris in there or it's not overly filled with food. They also have air sacs right here. What are you talking? I feel the belly to feel for them being fat or thin. I feel their body condition, their pectoral muscles on each side. And I'll include a picture that shows what fat and thin birds look like. Now I'm gonna listen to the heart. Typically, their heart rate will be over 250 beats per minute while being restrained. And make sure there's no arrhythmias or murmurs. Sometimes their hearts are so fast it's really hard to hear. And then I listen to all of their air sacs and their lungs. So I have to listen all around. And then I'll listen back here. And you can even listen to their sinuses on their head. It looks like a little hat, but sometimes with sinus infections or respiratory infections, you'll hear congestion. Then I feel their belly underneath. Right here is where it's soft and it should feel nice and concave. Sometimes it'll, it'll feel convex if there's fluid in the belly or you even can feel an egg if it's slow enough. Then I look at their booty. This is their vent. They have one cloaca that holds all of their urine and poop and that's where their legs come out if they're a female one hole check for areas of diarrhea staining or sometimes they get inflammation around it i also check feather quality his feathers are a little bit damaged but they're they're growing in nice and healthy now that he's going through his first molt I also check feather quality on his wings, and most birds don't really like their wings being messed with, but so you have to be very gentle. Look for stress bars. That can be a sign of stress. This is a picture of what they look like. His wings were previously clipped right here. You can see they clipped the outside primary feathers, but now he's growing in new feathers and he'll be able to fly soon. And I also check the preening gland in the back. You can see the preening gland right here. Just making sure it's not enlarged or um, there's no swellings or, or odd discharge from it. Um, they can get cancer or infections of the preening gland. Can't forget about the feet. You always want to check for bumblefoot or pododermatitis. His feet look great. I also check the nails. A lot of birds have overgrown nails, but his are perfect. There we go. Then we assess the overall feather quality. A lot of birds have feather plucking and feather damaging behavior, but he, he's just a baby and he's growing in his new feathers, so they will soon be nice and beautiful. Good job. And lastly, I check the color and texture of the droppings. They should have three components, the feces, urine, and urates. 